Is it even possible? Can you have 100,000 HBAR that today will net you $1 million in 2025? Now, here's the thing. I know what some of you critical thinkers are probably saying to yourselves. That there is no way 100,000 HBAR at the current price will allow you to become a millionaire in 2025, maybe 2035, but not 2025. And I actually agree with you guys, but here's the thing. I've received this comment and question a lot, either in DMs or in comment sections below. And the thing about these people asking the question, while they're probably gonna be very unhappy in 2025, what they're doing is shooting for the stars, okay? And what happens when you shoot for the stars in anything in life? You tend to land somewhere where you previously thought was impossible. And that's the thing about this crazy prediction. After crunching the numbers and making the video to kind of disprove and not shit on them in a way, but kind of just tell them politely you're wrong, I was actually very surprised. Very surprised at the numbers and it made me even more bullish on the project. And we're not just going over numbers today, mind you. We're going to have a look at some very recent bullish news that helps support these numbers even more. You can have the data and the fundamentals like the news working together to of course bring us these crazy predictions. So let me break it down. I want to open your mind. And the beautiful thing about all this is there's some big multiples to happen here, even from the current prices. So if you aren't someone who's in HBAR right now, you likely still have a fantastic opportunity. Now, the current price for HBAR is about 0.07 or about 7 cents. And 100,000 HBARs at that price, of course, is about 7,000 US dollars. Now, of course, for us to have this look like this and show the 1 million mark, it's going to have to be a very simple math price of $10, okay? Which, mind you, as we'll see in a minute here, is, well, let's just say quite unrealistic, especially for this cycle. But here's some of the data I want to put behind this. Now, trust me, buckle your seatbelts on because this is going to take us for a bit of a ride here, but you're going to end up at a destination in just a moment where you think to yourself, wow, like, here's the thing about crypto. You know, you can crap on influencers and people throwing random numbers at you, but what you can't crap on is data. And that's why I love it so much. And that's why I always bring it up in these videos is because I want to say to myself, no, HBAR can't 30X from today's price, but the data says it can. No spoiler alert there. So what are we looking at here? Well, it's the global market growth based on historic data in recent predictions. So we've got a whole bunch of predictions, about four or five from different enterprises and these large asset managers saying, we expect Bitcoin to go to $80,000 or the global market to go to 3.2 trillion in 2024. And I've kind of combined all these on recent videos. I mean, you guys can go back and have a look for yourself. It doesn't make for a very good video or videos if I repeat myself 24 seven. And then I've used data based on previous cycles to extrapolate that and have a look at what the price might be for Bitcoin in the global market in 2025, not just 2024 as well. And then we've also got a third point over here, which is a possible super peak. We got some crazy people uh, in the crypto community saying that the market cap might go to $10 trillion. So we're going to use these three points, 3.2 trillion global market cap in 2024, 6.5 in 2025, and a possible best case of 10 trillion somewhere in the next two years. And so with these three points, what we're going to do is now find HBAR's market dominance. So when we have the global market cap of, of course, projects at a given price, right? So you might have projects valued at 17 billion market cap, 25 billion market cap, the list goes on. Well, we can work that out, that number in relation to the global market cap as a percentage. If my project was valued at $1 billion and the global market cap was valued at $1 trillion, that's a 0.1%, if I got my maths right, market dominance, okay? So 0.1% of 1 trillion is 1 billion. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to work out what HBAR's current market dominance is, which is 0.15%. And we're going to use these three points and say worst case, average case, and absolute best case, and then find the average of those three points. Don't worry. That's all about I'm going to go into with this market dominance thing over here. So in this case, we have HBAR's current market dominance of 0.15%. What happens as an average case? And it peaks out somewhere in the next two years at 0.75% percent which is a 5x from its current dominance and mind you most projects in crypto at their peaks when they do have the most explosive moment go anywhere between a 5 to a 10x market dominance so this is in the middle ground this is realistic and what happens at the best case if it 10x's if the market cap 10x's as well okay so i've got these three points again this year worst case if it stays the same and then the two sort of middle and best cases as well. We've worked out in this case what the market cap will have to be at those points in time, what the price will be at those 
considering the dilution, of course, via the uh, circulating supply being diluted thanks to unlocks, and what the average price will be from these three levels. And it's $1.23, all right? But we also have a few other predictions to play into this as well. My price prediction sheet says $1.80, works on a very similar method to all of this. And my personal price is $2. And so we can again take the average of these three predictions and work out the, roughly speaking, realistic price it might actually go to in 2025, which is $1.68, which is a $69 billion market cap. And what we do as a general rule of thumb is just mark this on whatever platform you seem to be tracking your projects on. And we mark that with a red line. And this becomes the ceiling because I don't know if you guys know this or not, if you're new to the channel, you definitely won't, is a price prediction should be used as the best possible case for the project. And this might increase or decrease over the next two years. Of course, subscribe so you are, you know, in the loop with what actually happens and how we are going to mold our prediction based on what happens. But a price prediction works like this. It's a spike up and a spike down. It's not something you would find the price stabilizing around it doesn't do that that's the ceiling that's where it spikes up and comes back down to and so what you really have to do from this level is move down 25 percent and that actually becomes the price in which you can realistically begin to average out of as a price prediction which will i don't know be about one dollar 20 or so so with that being said you know hbar no hbar cannot hit ten dollars or a 410 billion dollar market cap in 2025 so for everyone in my dms asking me if that's even possible no don't listen to any influencer telling you it's even remotely close all right 400 billion market cap is about half of bitcoins right now and it's more than ethereum's so with that being said i think maybe 2035 that might be possible but we're going to use some data here to figure out will h bars still make great gains in the cycle even at today's prices and what we're going to do is compare two projects in a similar category as HBAR, as in layer one projects, but also projects that HBAR, uh, you know, is, I guess, sort of on par with in terms of the fundamental stuff. OK, keep in mind, though, we're going to compare, of course, back to 2021's, you know, prices and things. So 2021 had a lot less money in the market, right? We're saying to ourselves, basically in 2025 or 2024, rather, the global market cap will actually surpass that of what the market cap was at its peak in 2021. So overall, we likely will have anywhere between a two to three X in terms of more demand for the whole entire space than what we had back in 2021. So if a project went to a hundred billion market cap and that was like the highest, you know, a project could go to, well, in this case, it might be 200 billion. So let's quickly have a look at what HBAR looked like in the last cycle. The average price in the bear market was about 3.3 cents, which is about 2X and a bit off where it is right now. So it really hasn't changed all that much. It's all time high was 57 cents and about average, you would have seen about 15 to 17 X gains from these two points. So most people probably would have around about, you know, 13 or so X, you know, not timing the top exactly. And it's low to its all time high was about a 57 X. So more lucky people might have got an average of about a 40 to 50 X out of the market. But this was all built on zero utility and little traction. Hedera was actually an unknown project back then with an idea, an interesting idea but it still didn't align with the values of crypto at the time and even arguably right now, which is still Web3 focused, right? It's a Web2 focused project, but it's got a lot more demand for Web3 right now. So one key metric we're going to look at in this case is having a pulse on the interactions per day averaged out from 2021 and now. I'm going to compare this with three other promising similar projects in a moment. HBAR's daily average interactions in 2021, this little blip back over here was 2021, believe it or not, was 30,000 per day. Nothing, right? Averages right now, 1 million. What a growth, okay? You can probably even argue 2 million for some people. Okay, I'm not one of them. I think 1 million is probably more accurate on a longer time frame. Now, if we compare this to Cardano, its average growth in the last cycle was about a 39x. Again, you can kind of bring that down a little bit to about a 30 to 35x for most people. Yet its low to its all-time high was 129x. Crazy. This was similar to HBAR, not as less known. It was definitely more known in this case, but it had no smart contracts and built on buzz. So it was a bit different. But if HBAR went to the same market cap or all-time high as Cardano in the last cycle, it would have a price of about $2.80 or 39X from the current price of $0.07. Cents. 
Now, mind you, I think HBAR could, at best case, hit a 95 billion market cap. And what did the previous price tell us? Well, it said only a $1.60 or $69 billion market cap. But again, I think it could go close to $2, which is roughly speaking about a 100 billion market cap like uh, Cardano, if things do align, which again, we'll have a look into some really promising news here in a second. And so what were the interactions like over here for Cardano? Well, back then it was 200,000. So it roughly speaking had a lot more than HBAR at least, right? It had almost a 10x in average daily interactions and right now sitting about 3.5 million. So what you would expect in terms of growth and multiples for a project back then. ADA does have about 3.5 times more daily interactions than HBAR and yet the difference in market cap is a 7x, leaving us a discrepancy of 3.5x Mean that HBAR, considering the amount of interactions it has in comparison to Cardano, should be at a market cap of about 8.4 billion. This number is interesting, and we'll have a look here after analyzing Polkadot. Now, Polkadot average back in the last bear market, you can see the stats here, I'm not going to repeat myself, was about 13x, and from low to high was a 20x, but it was a late starter, so really didn't have the low lows like Cardano did. Still, like those two projects, HBAR and ADA, no parachains, no smart contracts, just all built on Buzz. Mind you, this was Web3 focused though, so it did have that more initial interest. The all-time high was a 56 billion market cap, meaning if HBAR went to the same price, it'd be about a 23x from here. But here's where things get interesting, okay? It had a very similar amount of daily interactions back then to Hedera. It just at its peak had a much more blow off top moment because it's Web3 focused parachains launch, which were a big, big buzz back then. And right now it's about 750,000 daily interactions, which is less than, of course, HBAR by about 33%. So HBAR has 33% more daily interactions, and yet the discrepancy in market caps is, interestingly enough, three and a half X different. So HBAR has more daily interactions, and yet it's, again, three and a half X smaller in terms of size. So if we just work that out, what's three and a half times 2.4, we get the same as 8.4 billion. But which is freaky, right? But remember that HBAR actually has 33% more interactions, which would put its market cap at about 11.3 billion. So it should be sitting at least right now between these two numbers, between these two market caps. Let's have one final look at another comparable project, which is Avalanche. So 9X average back then, 13X low to high. It was not a popular chain at that time. I'll tell you right now, and the all-time high market cap will reflect that. $30 billion. Now, if HBAR went to that at its all-time high, still a 12.5X from today's price, which I think is still very, very good multiples in a project like HBAR. I mean, I think all of us would, at the end of the day, still be happy with a 10X, okay? And so the interactions back then were about 73,000, which is actually, what's that, over 2X more than HBAR. And yet the interactions today is only about 70% more than HBAR, so not quite, okay? And yet the market cap is a 5.2x difference between here. So if we remove the $700,000 interactions from AVAX, which comes to about a 40% drop in terms of its value of the market cap, we put HBAR at about a 7.3 billion market cap. So between these three numbers, HBAR will roughly average out to between 8 to 9 billion market cap. So HBAR is undervalued is what I'm trying to say here. HBAR is significantly undervalued by an order of about well, it's three to four X, okay? So what I'm sort of saying is interactions aren't the be all and end all of a project. You shouldn't gauge everything based on how many people are talking about the project, but ultimately what causes price to pump in a project? It's not a metric. It's not a single amount of something increasing. It is people being more interested and in talking about the project, which HBAR has a lot of buzz on. What I can't answer is why the price is so suppressed. So for all of you asking the question of Kyron, you know, can you make a million bucks from HBAR? Well, of course, the price prediction came up at an average of about $1.60. Again, subscribe because that might change for the better or worse as time progresses. But I think no matter what, HBAR is still undervalued right now, about three to four X, at least comparable to other projects in the same area. So I think it's a ticking time bomb. And I'm going to support that fact by a few interesting upgrades with the project. One of them was the recent sort of MOU or memorandum of agreement, which is kind of like a handshake agreement or the next step up in terms of HBAR with the Saudi Ministry of Investment or MISA. Now, what does this really mean? Well, the Hashgraph announced the launch of Deep Tech Venture Studio. By the way, this is like literally a day or two old. This is like fresh news. And they went into a five-year agreement with the Saudi Ministry of Investment 
for a $250 million launch of this deep tech venture studio. So how will this benefit companies and how is this gonna look for HBAR? Well, this is extremely bullish. This is gonna have real application for the hash graph above and beyond what it's even being used for right now. The statement highlighted that the Deep Tech Venture Studio will be specifically designed to empower local Saudi companies, and mind you, Saudi Arabia. The Middle East is basically becoming one of crypto's biggest hotspots right behind France, as well as international companies interested in operating in the kingdom. The studio will develop innovative solutions and benefit from deep technology such as AI, blockchain, robotics, internet of things, virtual reality, and quantum computing, which are all things HBAR is extremely good at doing. Fast, secure computations that are very energy efficient. It is, if not the best tech in the space. And if you're someone disputing that and disregarding the hash graph, you are obviously not educated enough on crypto technology. I'm going to say it right now. I'm sorry. I know that might piss a lot of people off, but it's just true. And so shout out to AJ Wright. You guys might know him, uh, ex-BitBoy employee. He put an interview out recently with uh, Lehman and he actually said that well, Lehman said that one of the most important parts of Hedera is the governing council, right? These members where they're multinational corporations and they're these massive conglomerates, right? Maybe even some universities are in that mix. But it's important for trust because while they are centralized compared to what crypto guys like to visualize as decentralized, right? 12-year-olds running your projects. That's what they love, apparently. Well, in this case, it's a part of trust because these projects, right? These companies have their reputation on the line. They have everything visible. If they make a decision to line their own pockets or one that isn't aligned with the project's values, they are the ones going to lose their reputation and their, I guess, actual business in their own project, okay? There's a lot going behind it. And this was a really, really nice short clip that I loved from AJ. I might leave the link for this down below. It's 48 seconds, but trust me, if you are someone who hates the hash graph or hates the fact that it's run by all these sort of centralized companies, you are going to want to listen to it, okay? It's built all on trust, and that might sound crazy without you knowing how it all works. So go ahead and uh, give AJ a like on the on the tweet over here and watch this. Trust me, it's worth it. Now, actually, interestingly enough, there was a recent space on Twitter where Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, actually spoke very highly about the hash graph, and actually specifically he had Lehman Bard, and they might want to work with them on what's called the DREC Alliance, and I'll talk more about that momentarily. Now, Charles has historically said he's hated Hedera and the hash graph because it was behind a patent. You couldn't see it. It wasn't open source, but of course, that was part of the many genius reasons why they have done the things they have in the lineup that's progressed over time because, I don't know if you guys realize, the technology is so unique to Hedera, what you do is you put a patent on it so no one can copy it, and once you have built your project up enough so that you have the market share, then you release it so other people can copy it because the last thing you want is to spend years and decades of your life creating a unique and novel piece of technology and then just to have a larger company like Google, for example, come in and take that away from you and then use it and you've lost all credibility and all basically a market share, okay? Because they can make it happen faster than you can. So it's just one of the many reasons and things that people don't initially see and the same can be said for the governing council as well. But essentially, Charles has just come out in this thing and said, hey, he'd love to be a part of this DREC alliance. And not just Charles, but also there was an interview recently with Lehman Bard and also the CEO of Ripple, of course, Brad Gullinghouse, where Brad has said that he would love to uh, join forces with Hedera to create an environment where projects aren't so tribal and they're sort of like fighting for these little breadcrumbs in the real world. We all work together, get the bigger piece of the pie, then fight for the crowd once we are established. And I think it's going to be a really big partnership coming up here in the future. And I think that they'll want to work with HBAR for the DREC Alliance as well, which is basically allowing people to claw back their private keys if they ever lost them, right? If you lose your private keys in crypto, on your MetaMask, or whatever it is, uh, they're gone forever. You can't access your account. This will allow us to do that, to access these keys once again, which will bring on more of the mass market. And this is being spearheaded by Hedera and also Algorand, at least right now. So big things are coming. I've noticed a shift in the general outlook an opinion on HBAR and its quality recently. Of course, one of those such people has been Charles. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. To summarize, no. Again, you're not gonna make a million bucks with HBAR in this next cycle. $1.68 might be around about that level you need to look at. Again, make sure you are subscribed because I will keep you up to date 
whether things go lower or higher from there as we get more data and time progresses. Thanks so much. Talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.